Hey there and welcome to my channel, my name is Gina and today I wanted to reintroduce myself and this channel. This channel used to be something completely different and as of today I want it to become something that's more of a resource and a little bit more helpful to people, especially those that have considered or are considering the same journey that I've taken to get to where I am today. I'm a UX UI designer. I've been working as a designer for the past four-ish years. I didn't actually start off in this role. What I wanted to do today is I wanted to make this video to help people that don't really know where to start and don't really know what the process is like to move into a career that's completely different from what they're doing today. This video, I'm sharing my story about how I moved from customer support into UX design and I'm going to share four takeaways that I think are going to be helpful for anybody considering and making the move. And without further ado, let's get into it. So going back in time a little bit, when I first started my career, I didn't hold any design jobs, to be honest with you, because I was living in New York. I'm from New York. And for me, it was easier to get, instead of design jobs, to get customer facing jobs because that's what I was good at. That's not to say that I didn't have any design experience at all. I did. I studied art and design when I was in high school, and then I continued studying it when I was in college and then my four-year college. But I was, I always struggled with uh, making that leap because I was already comfortable doing customer, customer support. Once upon a time, some of the jobs that I held were cast member at the Disney store in Times Square. I worked at the Yankee Stadium as a premium hostess, as somebody who knows absolutely nothing about baseball, by the way. Those were some of the, the, the interesting jobs that I held, but you know what? I love those jobs. At the moment, I had a lot of fun and I learned a ton from them. So fast forward a bit in time, my first big girl gig was working at Shutterstock. I was a customer support rep there and it was my first foray into the tech world, which I think a, a, a lot of people, when they think of UX, UI designers, they think of the tech industry, which that's fair. But keep in mind that being a UX, UI designer doesn't mean, or product designer, doesn't mean that you have to work in the tech industry. There's plenty of other industries that need designers. So uh, from Shutterstock, I worked at a bunch of different startups working in customer support. Enter Design Lab. Design Lab is an online boot camp for people that want to transition from whatever job they're holding into UX design. I was working there as a customer support rep, and that was a pivotal moment for me because that was the first time that I saw UX, or well, first of all, I understood what UX design was, and I was able to see that it was a viable career option for me because it seemed to blend all of the things that I was either interested or good at. Yeah, it just, it, it, it was a, a, a very interesting moment for me because I had to make this decision on how I was going to transition there to where I wanted. So I had to speak with my manager, but it wasn't that simple because I always struggled with advocating for myself. I mustered up the courage to speak to her and as fate would have it, she encouraged me to take the course. I spoke to the people I had to speak to, I got approved to take the course, and I started it. Fast forward in time a bit, I was taking the course, I was doing it part-time, which is about 20 hours a week. I was working full-time, and then on top of that, I was working another part-time job for the same company, doing some of their marketing, design, illustration, motion design stuff. And I... On one hand, I was having the time of my life because I was like, yes, I'm doing what I really want to do. But on the other side, I was stressed. And if I were to point at a moment in time where I was like, okay, this is where I sacrificed to get to where I am right now, that was it. That was where I felt like I had sacrificed or was sacrificing, um, you know, time, relationships, I was so, so lucky. I was very much in a privileged position. And I understand that because I know that there's people that are probably doing that and more and they're doing it alone. I had my now husband. I had my in-laws. I had my parents, my friends. They were all supporting me to get to the finish line. And thankfully I did. So I graduated. And at that point, my mentor and I were talking about sort of 
working together. Not sort of, we wanted to work together. He, he hired me out of the program and I worked with him in his consulting business, which I was honored, of course, because I still consider him to be such a really good designer, such a strategic thinker, and he's definitely a mentor to, to me to this day. So we worked together on a bunch of fun projects. Uh, it was so varied. I was working on like branding projects, UX design projects, um, uh, illustration stuff. It was, it was really varied web design. It was all going well up until I realized I was being very honest with myself that I needed to work on a team. It was just the two of us for the most part. And for somebody that was really early in their career, I, I felt like I needed peers that I can riff ideas off of or just learn best practices from and stuff like that. Like, it's just, I, I felt like at that point, the more insights I got from other people, the better it was for me to grow. So with a heavy heart, I did part ways uh, at that point, um, and I looked for a new opportunity. That opportunity was a very coincidental and serendipitous type of event for me because I had reached out to an old colleague of mine for something completely unrelated. Shortly after, she reached out to me because she was hiring for a UX UI designer. She was head of product for a German startup, and I applied, I interviewed, and I got the job. That was for me like the best the best news ever because i was working on a team with two other designers i was working closely with her uh the pm and well she was head of product so she was like de facto pm and working with like a bunch of really talented developers it was all going swimmingly i was learning so much but then they had layoffs i was the only remaining designer on the team that put me back exactly where I started. And as much as I loved working with uh, my manager, she's still somebody I consider super intelligent. She was my guide at the time. I had the conversation with her that I was going to look for another role. And again, as fate should have it, I was connected to another German startup by somebody that I knew. I applied for the job there. I got it and I started working there. That was for me another moment in time where I felt like I just like like my my knowledge of of product processes, design processes, uh, design systems, all of that stuff that just like skyrocketed. I learned so much there. I'm so grateful to my manager from that company to my team, the the people that I worked with. Uh, all of them taught me something, and I still carry all of that with me today. And I, I genuinely believe that I wouldn't be where I am today if it hadn't been for everything and everybody that I learned from at that time. I poured my heart and soul into what I did there, and I, I did reap the rewards from that. I got promoted six months in, which for me was incredible. It was so satisfying to see that, you know, all the work that I was doing was, was paying off. And... It was hard when it did come to the decision to leave that company because my team was so great. I love the UX design team there. They were amazing people. They are amazing people and I still keep in touch with them today. So you're probably wondering why'd you leave there? Well, there was a few reasons, but I think the two that were the biggest were one, I was getting married. The other one was, actually this is the bigger one. Remember the mentor that hired me out of Design Lab? Well, he reached out to me and connected me with a startup that needed some additional design help and I work there full time today. So I, I think we're at the point of this video where we can start talking about the takeaways. So let's get to it. Takeaway number one, the power of networking. When I think of the story of my career, I quickly realized that a big catalyst of growth and change were actually the people that I met along the way. And these were the mentors, the managers, the peers, the colleagues. All of these people significantly shaped my career trajectory. And because of this, I truly believe that networking is your lifeline. If you consider my leap into Design Lab, the opportunities post boot camp, and even just reconnecting with an old colleague of mine, all of these things are possible because I inadvertently, admittedly, I nurtured my network. And it's important to consider that all of the connections that you make throughout your journey, they're a bridge to possibilities. And that's not all people are, but I think what I wanna say is that your career isn't just what you know, it's also the people that you know. And 
a lot of times I think people consider networking to be, you know, you go to these events and you force connections out of complete strangers. But I think the reality is much simpler. It's really just taking what you have, creating meaningful and sincere connections with the people that you have around you already and using that as your network. If you consider my, my journey, you'll notice that a lot of the opportunities that came up were because of the people that I knew. And I'm always going to be grateful for that. Takeaway number two, leveraging past experiences. Looking back, I think that my career is a pretty good example of the fact that you never actually start from zero when you're switching careers. Every role that I've had from the Disney store all the way to Shutterstock, these were all master classes in skills that I now consider really important for what I do today. So um, empathy, problem solving, um, communication, all of these I learned from there, but they make me good at what I do now. Every experience is a building block because no matter what, there's some way to connect your current strengths into what it is that you actually want to do. And an example is, are you coming from a background working as a teaching assistant? Well, I'm sure that you also need to know how to be empathetic. You also know how to problem solve and think on your feet. And guess what? All of those things would make you a really good UX designer as well. Takeaway number three, balancing skill sets. I believe that UX design is a trifecta of skills. It's your soft skills, it's your technical skills, and it's your design sensibility. I think my journey highlights the importance of understanding where you are in each of those categories because, for example, in my case, my early customer facing roles, those help me develop a lot of those skills, the soft skills that I use today. The boot camp helped me understand how to use those more technology related things like Figma and understanding HTML and CSS. My early education in art and design helped me create a, a foundation for that design sensibility I spoke about. I wasn't a great designer to begin with, just to be clear. I definitely, you know, I understood some of those design principles, but I wasn't necessarily great at them. I would say that the real growth comes from identifying the things that you're actually not good at and focusing on those. Why? Because it's really easy to lean into the things that you're good at. And to a certain extent, it's, it's good that you do that, but it shouldn't be the only thing you focus on because to be a well-rounded UX designer, you need to be able to do all three of those things that I just mentioned. And in my case, one of my weakest points was presenting. I, that's a soft skill. I'm a naturally shy person. I'm a naturally introverted person. I just fake it really well. And I struggled a lot early on when I had to present my work, but I learned the importance of, well, from the very beginning of your design process, being very intentional with your design decisions and always being able to have an answer to why. Why did you do things this way? Because at the end of the day, we're not just making pretty interfaces, we're trying to solve real life problems. Another thing is that in particular, I want to emphasize the importance of soft skills. I know I've said this over and over again throughout this video, but there's a reason for that because I, throughout uh, my career as a designer, I've been able to participate in recruitment processes. Uh, typically, what I mean by this is that when we're hiring for somebody at a company, we typically involve other team members to be part of that recruitment process to give their opinions on the different candidates. So if it comes down to two equally talented designers, what ends up being the tiebreaker and what ends up sometimes tipping the balances in your favor is the soft skills because we'll be asking ourselves, can we see ourselves working with this person? Um, does this person seem easy to work with? Uh, do they look like they'll positively impact our company culture? Those are really important things. And at the core of it is the soft skills. So I would definitely encourage you to look at your experience and see if there's anything that you can improve in any of those soft skills. And just a sort of a heads up, my next video is going to be about soft skills and the ones that I think are the most important to have in order to be a good UX designer and to land that job. Takeaway number four, the power of self-advocacy and overcoming fear. Now, this is probably the most personal but universal lesson that I've learned so far. To go, take a step back, I get asked a lot why I didn't become a designer sooner in my career, especially keeping in mind that I studied design, well, graphic design. 
And the truth is that I've always had a hard time advocating for myself. I, there was always a, a, a level of fear that I had of letting people know what it is that I really wanted to do because I thought that people were going to think that maybe I just didn't want to do my job. So I ended up doing the opposite. I would like lean in to trying to be the best customer support person that I can be. That obviously took away from me being able to focus on being a better designer, becoming a designer at all. So I realized that advocating for yourself isn't just about confidence. It's about recognizing your value and not being afraid to share that value with the world. And it's also about moving beyond the fear of rejection and embracing the possibility that maybe you can be that designer that you want to be or whatever it is that you want to be. So don't forget how important it is to advocate for yourself. Take it from me, who I probably should have done this a lot sooner in my career. So what does all of this mean for you? Whether you're looking to shift your career into something else or you're actually looking to continue to grow in your current career path, just remember these lessons. Your past work experiences aren't just history, they're your arsenal. Your network is more than just your contacts, it's your community. Your skills aren't fixed, they're fluid, and they're going to keep evolving with every experience and every new challenge. Your voice is super powerful, so use it to advocate for your dreams and for your next big leap. Thank you for allowing me to share my story with you. If this journey of mine somehow resonated with you or you're going on your own journey, I would love to hear about it in the comments. And if you found this video interesting, feel free to give it a like or feel free to subscribe. I'm gonna be pushing out more content like this to help people that want to move into UX design as a career. I hope to see you guys in the next one. Thank you again, bye.